Welcome to part two of module five. This is the second segment of the fifth installment in the Emerging Infectious Disease videos for pre-hospital providers series. In this video, we will be discussing the donning and doffing of personal protective equipment for wet Ebola precautions. This instructional series was created by the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, Department of Emergency Health Services, with assistance from the Maryland Department of Health, the Maryland Institute for Emergency Medical Services Systems, and funding from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. In this module, we will describe the process of applying and removing the various types of personal protective equipment required for the use of wet Ebola virus disease precautions. These levels of precautions are used when there is a patient with known or suspected Ebola virus disease with active bleeding, vomiting, or diarrhea. We will also demonstrate the correct order to don and doff PPE for this elevated level of precautions and any special considerations for providers while doffing contaminated equipment. Please note that the exact equipment that is used in this video may be different than what is used in your jurisdiction. You should always follow your jurisdictional protocols for donning and doffing PPE based on the equipment available in your service area. For patients with a suspected Ebola infection with active bleeding, vomiting, or diarrhea, wet Ebola PPE must be used. PPE for patients with a suspected Ebola infection with active bleeding, vomiting, or diarrhea includes disposable gloves with extended cuffs, disposable nitro gloves, a fluid impermeable coverall, a papper with an inner and outer shroud, rubber boots, a fluid impermeable apron or gown. Please note that the exact PPE used in your jurisdiction may differ from the equipment used in this video. Services may elect to use an N95 mask in combination with an impermeable hood that covers the head and shoulders and a full face shield. The PPE selection may be modified for the use of this ensemble. This section covers donning and doffing of a coverall and a papper with an impermeable drape style hood. Now that we know what pieces of PPE are needed for wet Ebola precautions, let's look at the proper procedure for donning the PPE. Remember, when donning PPE for dry or wet Ebola patients, always use a checklist and a trained observer to ensure PPE is applied correctly and securely. Before applying their PPE, pre-hospital providers must remove and stow all personal items such as rings and watches and pull back long hair if present. If a provider wears glasses, they should be secured with a neck strap behind the provider's head. Providers must also hydrate before donning their PPE by drinking at least 8 ounces of water and use the restroom if possible. Next, the trained observer will record a set of baseline vital signs, including the provider's pulse, blood pressure, temperature, and weight. Please note, providers should always follow their departmental guidance for medical screening. The provider and the trained observer will then inspect each piece of PPE to be sure it is not ripped or torn. Next, test the PAPR motor and airflow. Check that the filters fit securely and ensure all filter caps are off. Adjust the size of the PAPR belt to the provider's waist, ensuring a snug fit. Then, assemble the PAPR blower, hose, and hood 
and put the entire assembled unit aside for later donning. Don and test a two-way radio headset and microphone if one is being used. Once the headset is secured, perform hand hygiene and put on the first pair of extended cuff gloves. Next, put on the coverall halfway, up to the provider's waist. Don the boots over the feet of the coverall suit. The trained observer should then tape around the top of the boot, leaving a tab of tape for easy removal during doffing. Pull the coverall down over the top portion of the boot, covering the taped areas. Once the boots are securely taped, the trained observer will assist the provider in applying the papper hood. First, turn on the papper blower unit. With the assistant holding the papper blower, don the papper hood, ensuring the sweatband is properly positioned. The trained observer will then pull the coverall suit the rest of the way up, ensuring the internal shroud of the papper hood is secured inside the coverall suit and then completely zipping the coverall suit. Then, the assistant will drape the external shroud over the provider's shoulders. Finally, the assistant and the provider will apply the papper blower unit to the provider's waist. The provider will then bend over and squat to remove excess air from the suit and ensure unrestricted movement.
Once the paper is applied, don the outer gloves over the coverall suit sleeves and tape around the top of the glove, leaving a tab for easy removal during doffing. If your jurisdiction requires it, a fluid impermeable isolation gown and a third pair of gloves should be donned over the coverall at this time. The assistant should help the provider don the gown by briefly disconnecting the paper hose from the hood and placing the gown over the provider's head. Reattach the hose before securing the gown. Once the hose has been reattached, tie the gown at the provider's waist. Apply a third pair of gloves, ensuring the cuffs of the glove are pulled over the isolation gown. Finally, both the observer and the provider should verify the integrity of the ensemble. The provider should be able to perform a range of motions without stressing or binding the coverall. Once patient care is complete, you will then need to doff your PPE. Remember, the doffing of PPE is a high-risk process that requires a structured procedure and a trained observer. PPE must be removed slowly, deliberately, and in the correct order to reduce the possibility of self-contamination or other exposure to infectious microbes. As stated before, providers should always use a checklist and a trained observer when doffing PPE after interacting with patients under investigation for Ebola virus disease. If resources allow, a trained observer and a doffing assistant should be used when doffing wet Ebola PPE. The trained observer should don dry Ebola PPE prior to initiating the doffing process. Additionally, during doffing, the assistant should read each step of the procedure aloud as they move through the doffing process and visually confirm that the PPE has been removed properly. Doffing should be performed in pre-designated zones moving from the most contaminated areas, typically called the red zone or hot zone, to the clean zone as doffing is performed. In this video, we show three doffing zones, the red zone, yellow zone, and green zone. Each doffing area should have hand sanitizer dispensers, biohazardous waste disposal bags, decontamination containers for the paper and other reusable items, and chairs that can be disinfected to assist in the doffing process. 
Please note that the trained observer should never enter the contaminated doffing areas. Each jurisdiction may perform doffing differently, so always follow your service protocols for the doffing process. The first step in doffing is to inspect the PPE and assess for any visible contamination, cuts, or tears before beginning to remove it. If any PPE is visibly contaminated, disinfect using an EPA-registered disinfectant wipe using the one-wipe, one-swipe method. Next, perform hand hygiene on your outermost gloves. If you are using an apron, remove it by breaking the neck strap and releasing the waist ties. Roll the apron away from you, containing the soiled outer surface as you roll. Discard the apron into the biohazard bag, being careful not to touch the other surfaces. Reinspect the underlying coverall for visible contamination, cuts, or tears, and perform hand hygiene. Next, begin removing your boots and second layer of gloves by first untaping the top of each boot. Dispose of the tape in the biohazard waste bin and perform hand hygiene. Then, untape your outer gloves, dispose of the tape, and perform hand hygiene. Remove your gloves, dispose of them in the biohazard waste bin, and perform hand hygiene. To remove your boots, grasp the back of the metal chair in the red zone to mitigate the risk of falling over. Step on the heel of each boot and cleanly step out of the boots one foot at a time, sidestepping to the yellow zone as each foot is freed from the boot and ensuring the boots remain in the red zone. Once you are in the yellow zone, perform hand hygiene. You will now remove the papper unit by releasing the belted blower unit, pulling it up and away from your body then, lean over and remove the papper hood, keeping it as far away from you as possible. Immediately drop the papper hood and belt into the decontamination container and perform hand hygiene. The provider will then begin to remove the coverall suit by untaping the zipper cover and unzipping the front of the suit. Grasp the outside of the suit near your shoulders and, pushing your shoulders forward, peel the suit back, being careful not to touch the inside of the suit with your contaminated gloves. Once your shoulders are free, pull your arms out of the suit one at a time and perform hand hygiene. Leave the coverall around your waist as you remove your final pair of gloves, disposing of them into the biohazardous waste bin. Perform hand hygiene and move to the edge of the yellow zone.
now touching only the inside of the coverall. Push the suit down to your ankles and pull your feet out of the booties one foot at a time, stepping into the green zone as each foot is freed. Once in the green zone, perform hand hygiene. Remove the two-way radio unit, place it into the decontamination bin for later cleaning, and perform hand hygiene. Step into clean, slide-on shoes if present. After all PPE is removed, the provider should wash their hands with soap and water as soon as possible. At this time, the provider is considered clean and may proceed to the restroom and shower area per your service protocols. Thank you for joining us for Module 5. Additional resources can be found in the links below this video. In the next module, we will talk about personnel decontamination and what to do if you think you may have been exposed to an infectious agent.